Sonoff sent me several things lately to test and review. Three of those things came only days before their release date, which was Thanksgiving. I am not quite that fast, however, I did shoot all of the footage needed of the unboxing installation and setup in the Home Assistant for all three relays. The problem is, to be perfectly honest, I'm writing this the day it needs to be released, so we'll see how that pans out. For the first two relays, the Zigbee ones, I wanted to try to shoot a straight-through unscripted video, and that went about as well as you might expect, if you expect badly, because that's how it went. There were several issues, not the least of which being that the first time I tried wiring one of the relays, I used 12 gauge solid core wire. That's a bit thinner than a 4 mil wire for those of you whose footballs are round. The rigidity of the wires and the very incorrectness of my box depth caused me much anguish. Then I remembered I have some 14 gauge braided copper wire, roughly 2.5 mil wire. At some point I couldn't find in the footage, I removed the little bridge between two of the socket's neutrals and one of the socket's hots. Then I cut, trimmed, tinned, and connected the first two hots to the outputs on the relay that doesn't need a neutral. Then I rebridged the neutrals on the outlet because I was much dumber a few moments ago. After cutting and trimming the wire to go from the outlet to the neutral way go, the camera stopped recording and I didn't notice right away. By the time I got back up and running, I had already tinned the neutral, so I ran the neutral on the other outlet where I hadn't removed the neutral side bridge. Then I gave the mini relay that needs one a neutral of its own. I clipped all the neutrals into the designated Wago. Then I pulled the one for the relay and tinned it along with the hot wires. I connected the second outlet's hot wires to the other mini relay that does require the neutral. Then I ran a wire from the hot on the cord to an L terminal on the first relay. After that, I ran a wire from another L terminal on the first relay to an L terminal on the second relay. Next, I cut, trimmed, tinned, and attached ground wires to the outlets and the Wago connected to the ground on the cord. At this point, I'm ready to pack it all in the box, but before I do, I want to test to make sure it's all working. That means connecting the devices to my Home Assistant. I open Home Assistant, open the settings, go to the Devices and Integrations, then down to Zigbee. I tap Add Device, and after a few seconds, the first interview starts. After a very short interview, he must have had a good resume, it configures fairly quickly, and I can add an area. Due to the way the neutral free relay is neutral free, you have to have a load on the circuit, and as I'll find out later, it should be a bit more significant than a single small LED bulb. The device has its interview, gets the job, and I add it to the Christmas area. After that, I decided to test switching it on and off. Then this happened, because the bulb circuitry only needs a small amount of power to start doing its thing, and it also stores a bit of it in its regulation circuitry before letting it go. It tries to come on, but only has enough oomph to flash and start charging again, starving the device while doing so. That's a simplified version, but I'm not going to talk about what power is and how it's carried in this video. If you would like to know about that stuff, you can let me know the usual ways, or probably just wait long enough and I'll cover it at some point. While I'm calling to action, if you're enjoying the video, why not go ahead and click the pixel art representation of Little Jack Horner's favorite digit. Okay, back to the outlets. Now that I've set up and tested the relays, I'll go ahead and screw the outlets down and then attach the faceplate. That outlet now lives in this box on my porch and provides power switching for the lights in my front bushes, the icicle lights on the front of the house that I'll get to at some point, and the runway lights that are also still a work in progress. Next, I'm going to create my 12 plugs of Christmas box. I need to plug in a bunch of little light strings for a half-size tree, some lights around the window, some lights that will be for some small decorations on the sill, and probably some other accent lights. I've had this six gang box for quite a while. The original purpose was going to be demonstrations where I would put a camera inside one end and work on the other, but that was dumb and didn't work, so I ended up just cutting the bottom out of a two gang box and using that. I wanted to use the solid core wire from earlier because this box has more depth and will be more forgiving. The first thing to do was set the faceplate on the box and set the outlets on it facing in. 
This way, I can more accurately get an idea of wire lengths, and I can assemble everything sort of imagining the box around it. First, I decide to do the hot wires. I was not smart enough to just stagger the terminals, but I managed to get the hots wired on two sets of three outlets, with the two in the center of the box having leads to run to the relay. Then I started working on the neutrals. I did think about it and staggered the wires this time, but I didn't pay attention yet again when the camera told me it stopped recording, so let's skip to the first three wires already being installed. I didn't have to run any lead for the relay, so I ran the neutral all the way down the line. Then it was just a matter of placing the relay and bending the leads. One set of outlets will be wired to L1, and the other will be wired to L2. Before I wired in the cord, I needed to add the grounds. Like the neutral, I just ran this from outlet to outlet all the way down the line. Then it was time to add the neutral wire for the relay device. After that, I decided to add a half inch conduit fitting for more cord protection. Next, I got to use my new toy. My soldering iron died and I decided to try out this cheap portable. So far it's been really good, although I'm a little hesitant to say that out loud too much. For more maneuverability, I cut the outer wire insulator down a bit more. Then I finally run the hot from the cord to the L terminal on the relay device, tie all the neutrals together with a Wago, and tie the ground to the cord with a Wago. I know you can't really see that here, but I didn't know I was out of frame and I'm not taking the thing apart again to reshoot. Next, I add possibly the worst strain relief, but it'll suit my needs. I went ahead and got all the screws started to mount the outlets, but before I tightened everything down, I wanted to test and make sure everything was working. So I plugged in the device, found the manual, and grabbed my phone. SmartThings already detected my device, despite my never having set up SmartThings, but I ignore it and open Home Assistant. You know, the control interface I chose. Then I open Settings, Devices and Integrations, find the Matter integration, and tap Add Device. Tell it I'm using a new device and scan the QR code almost suspiciously fast and then hit I'm ready. I forgot to turn on Bluetooth, so I do that real quick, then hit next. Now it will spend a bit of time connecting to the device. It was about 20 seconds. Then it will generate credentials and connect the device to Wi-Fi, which also takes a little while. Then it will spend a little time connecting to Home Assistant. Finally, hit done and there it is. I tap the circuits and I hear the relays click. I tested one side with the circuit tester before putting on the faceplate, but I did test all of the sockets later on. Now it was finally time to screw the outlets into place and install the faceplate. And there it is, the 12 plugs of Christmas, all ready for the front room display. I will absolutely share the final light setup once I'm done, but I have three more things to put together and about 90 feet of icicle lights that still need put up. And it's cold. But anyway, those were the new Mini Duo relays from Sonoff. The Zigbee with neutral version and the Matter version are $17.90 each, and the no neutral Zigbee version is $21.90. I can't speak to the longevity, of course, but I'll let you know how they fare controlling the Christmas lights this season. Before I go, I'd like to thank these fine folks for helping me keep making videos, and I'd like to thank all viewers for your minutes. We're all allotted an unknown limited supply of minutes, and you've spent some of yours with me. I sincerely appreciate that, and I do hope you'll join me next time as I continue exploring Smarter Circuits.